Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what I have for you here is a nice numeric expression. So let me just kind of repeat what I just said. I said numeric expression. So we have some numbers and they are expressing something and what they're expressing is one specific value. So in mathematics, you know, what we want to do is simplify these expressions, whether it be a numeric expression or an algebraic expression. But uh, in this particular problem, we don't want to use our calculator because we want to test our knowledge of working with different mathematical operators. And of course, we have some positive and negative number stuff going on as well. So if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have 5 times 8 divided by negative 2. All of this divided by 2 plus negative 6. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The correct answer is 5. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. It shows me that you know a thing or two about the order of operations. But let's give you a nice little happy face in an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate your success with simplifying numeric expressions. Again, you're going to need to know something about the order of operations and positive and negative numbers. So let's go ahead and just uh, quickly review um, the order of operations. Now, this is uh, just a, gonna be a very fast review. If you need help with any of the stuff beyond this particular video, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on basic math, things in, uh, at this level, i.e. the order of operations, fractions, decimals. But if you want uh, more of a formal course of instruction, check out my Math Foundations course in my Math Help program. It'll really help you out. Anyways, uh, in mathematics, we have these things like this. And of course, you know, we uh, recognize this as an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But what these really are, are what we call mathematical operators. Okay, so if I give you two numbers, let's say seven and three, well, what can we do with those numbers? Well, we could plug in any one of these respective mathematical operators and a number will come out, a value will come out. And what value comes out all depends on, obviously, what mathematical operation we are going to do. So there's just, um, you know, uh, not like a free-for-all when we have a problem like the one we're going to be facing. Like, oh, we've got a bunch of mathematical operators here. I could just do, you know, just start doing things that I know how to do. It, it's not that easy. I wish it was, but actually we have to go in a very specific order. So the, that order is, of course, the order of operations. Okay, what order do we do these things in? I'll kind of give you a, a more specific um, kind of review about that in a second. So that's the first thing we're going to need to know to do this problem. The second thing we're going to need to know is how do we deal with positive and negative numbers, all right? So uh, this problem, in terms of a grade-level problem, would be like a middle school type of uh, prompt. So something like the 6th, 7th, definitely like 8th grade, if you're curious. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And again, put that calculator away. Use that calculator in between your ears, as that is a supercomputer. All right, so here we here we go. Here's our problem. And again, we need to think about the order of operations, right? So we have different things going on here. We have multiplication, we have division, uh, we have addition down here, and of course we have these negative numbers. And even this long fraction bar is division. So we have to really understand um, the order of operations. And the way we understand it, or can remember it rather, is using this little memory aid, this little mnemonic called PEMDAS. Now I'm pretty sure my great great grandparents way back in the 1800s probably used this same phrase. So this thing has been around forever, but basically uh, it starts with P and P stands for uh, parentheses. Okay, so you're going to do parentheses first. And again, this is just a quick summary video because really 
uh, to fully understand this, you need to look at more uh, uh, challenging problems than just this particular problem, right? So you got to be, you know, uh, look at a, a lot of different variety of uh, situations. But anyways, P stands for parentheses, so that we're going to focus on that, or grouping symbols, okay? So things that like this with brackets or these squiggly things, these are all grouping symbols, but it falls under the category of P. And what that means is that when we see these grouping symbols, these parentheses, brackets, whatnot, we're going to focus on doing those from uh, the innermost outs. In other words, if we have parentheses and parentheses like this, we're going to go to the most inner, the innermost uh, parentheses or grouping symbols and then kind of work our way out. Okay, so what does E stand for? Well, E stands for exponents. And effectively, we're talking about powers here. Okay, things like 2 to the third. Uh, would be an example. This little three up here is the exponent, but of course we're not going to put another p there because I could be confused with the first p. We won't say, oh, we're going to do powers next, so we do exponent. So in this case, two to the third power would be two times two times two, or eight. Now the thing about this PEMDAS um, memory aid, it's just a checklist, and we'll, the way we go through it is from left to right. And if we have the situation, we do this situation, but if we don't have that, you know, particular thing to deal with, i.e. if we don't have any powers, we just skip it and move on to the next thing. And the next thing is going to be multiplication, but not just multiplication. Really, this is probably one of the most confused things about the order of operations. It's multiplication and division. All right. So, uh, now you might be saying, well, are we going to do multiplication before division? Not necessarily, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is either multiplication or division, or if we see division first, we'll do division, then multiplication. It's whatever we see first from left to right. Very, very common area of confusion for the order of operations. Again, if you want to see um, other prompts like this, just go to my YouTube channel and just scour through my uh, channel. I got like, I don't know, uh, 1,500 plus videos, so ton of stuff through the years. But if you want more of a formal course of instruction, go to either to my pre-algebra course or my math foundations course. All right, so after we deal with all the multiplications of division, we're going to move on to addition and subtraction. Again, we are working this from left to right. Okay, so that's basically the checklist, PEMDAS. So there's one other thing here that we want to keep in mind. And that's basically when you have a big, long fraction bar like this right here, we just want to kind of think of the numerator, that's the top number of a fraction, and the denominator as two groups. Okay, in other words, think of this as one separate problem, and we're going to work this problem and uh, get one value, and we're going to do the same thing down here in the numerator. We're going to do, do handle the uh, denominator. Excuse me, the denominator separately is a separate group. We'll get an answer here. We're going to answer here, and then we'll deal with that final fraction. Okay, so that's another very common misunderstanding. This fraction bar does separate these, so you can kind of think of these as just two gigantic, uh, big groups, and we'll uh, clean up, or we'll focus on the numerator, and then we'll focus on the denominator, and then we'll put those final values together. So that's how you want to handle this situation. Now, if you were a little bit confused on this, you're like, okay, I get it now. Well, at any time, I would encourage you just to pause the video and see if you can actually, you know, uh, simplify this thing. Again, put that calculator away. Uh, you don't need it. Um, you know, you definitely already, if you understood uh, the things I just told you, have the ability to do this as long as you understand positive and negative numbers. But let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so here we are. We're thinking about PEMDAS, and we're going to be working each the the numerator and denominator. We're just they're like two separate problems. Okay, just kind of think of it uh, think of it that way. So now let's take a look at the numerator. So here I have multiplication. Here I have division. So what am I going to do first? Well, I'm thinking from left to right. What do I see first? I see multiplication first, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I don't have any parentheses. I don't have any powers. So I'm going to go ahead and do this 5 times 8. Okay, multiplication is, uh, is before division, not because it's always before division. It's just in this case, it's uh, from left to right. It's the first operation we're going to do. So we're going to do 5 times 8. And 5 times 8, of course, is 40. All right, so this cleans up as 40. 
divided by negative 2. And we'll just go ahead and just take one step there. And then down here in the denominator, we have 2 plus negative 6. And hopefully, you know that that is indeed negative 4. Now, here, if you're a little bit confused with this, that's just a you know feedback indication that you need to um, go back and review and learn positive and negative numbers. Remember, there is nothing wrong with um, uh, not knowing anything. But in other words, if you don't understand something in math, let me say this in a better way. If you don't understand something, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so uh, where is where do the problems occur? Well, the problems occur if you're like, hey, I don't understand this, uh, and then you don't do anything about it. That's where the problems occur, right? So we always are working towards developing our understanding, but what you need is your little math shopping list, right? So you're like, okay, I need to pick up some skills on positive and negative numbers, and you just make yourself a little to-do list, all right? Work on these skills, because if you... Try to like, you know, cover your ears, close your eyes. You're like, I hope I never see that again. You know, it doesn't work that way. If you are serious about learning math, you know, uh, you're going to see all these skills in action. Math is indeed cumulative, right? So whatever you don't understand, just make note of it and go work on that. And things will go much, much better. All right. So hopefully uh, you understand that 2 plus a negative 6 is indeed negative 4. All right. So here's where our problem is right now. And we don't want to do all of this in, in we don't want to do multiple steps all at once. That's the worst thing you could do. So at most, you could take like uh, two steps. There's we actually did two things here, but the reason why I'm okay with it here is because we are thinking of this as one problem, but this top problem, the numerator, we just took one step and down here in the denominator, we just took one step. So as long as you're neat and organized and you can control the problem in, in that manner, okay, conceptually, then you're okay. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So here is where we're uh, where we're at next. We have 40 divided by negative 2. So again, well, there's nothing else up here to do except for division. So 40, we have a positive being divided by a negative. So the answer is going to be negative. So 40 divided by negative 2 will be a negative 20. And then, of course, we already had a negative 4, in the uh, denominator, just remember that's what we have right there. So now we have uh, negative 20 divided by negative 4. We have a negative divided by negative, which is indeed a positive. So 20 divided by 4 is a positive 5. Okay, so I think uh, on the scale of difficulty, this problem is a pretty uh, easy problem. Now, some of you might be saying, well, it might be easy to you. Mr. YouTube Math Man, because you've been doing this for years. Yes, that's true too. I mean, uh, but if you if, even if you're like you're in sixth grade or seventh grade, this is not an overly difficult problem. But I'm not saying that if you got this wrong to make you feel bad. Okay, what I'm saying is uh, there's going to be a lot more challenging problems. Right. So uh, if you found this difficult, what you need to do is just learn the skills. Okay, go back and get yourself some full instruction. The worst thing you can do when you're trying to learn math is try to like uh, quickly cram and be like, okay, let me just get a quick crash course on this. Uh, you know, like if you ask your friend, hey, don't tell me everything, just tell me what I need to know. Uh, sometimes you just need to kind of take a deep breath, settle down and get yourself some good, complete, full instruction. And that's what I do at my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.